EU audiovisual reform will create a nanny state. Oh, this is going to be good, isn't it? 28 versions of Facebook, a nanny state and censorship of the internet. Those could be the consequences if the European Parliament's position on the directive regulating the provision of audiovisual media services enters into force. On Monday the 15th, two German co-rapporteurs, Sabine whoever, received the Parliament's mandate to begin informal trilogue negotiations with the European Commission and Council on the EU of the final version of the text. This is how unbelievably Byzantine the European Union is. The report was originally adopted from on the 25th of April at a meeting of the Parliament's Committee on Culture and Education. According to the Parliament's new rules of procedure, the Committee of Reports constitutes the House's position, without the need for a broader parliamentary discussion. The file would be put on the table this autumn while Estonia holds a Council Presidency. My country, made world famous for its broad implementation of digital technologies, ironically risks going down in history as the accomplice to the establishment of state censorship of social networks in Europe. <sighs> well done, Brussels. The initiative to update the Audiovisual Media Services Directive came from the European Commission and was completely justified. Much has changed since the initial rules for the audiovisual media in Europe were first put into place. In particular, the internet has challenged the role of television as a source of information as an advertising platform. It has. But the reform was compromised when the Parliament appointed the two rapporteurs, who are both board members of Germany's public broadcaster. This means not only do they represent a single country, but they have an obvious conflict of interests. The rapporteurs have turned the Commission's proposal into an instrument to destroy the competitive advantage of the internet over normal television. What a surprise! Moreover, the definition of a video sharing platform has been changed in such a way that all social networks with a video function are also subsumed into the category. If today's version of the AVMS directive regulates YouTube, tomorrow it will cover Facebook, Twitter and the like. Social networks and their users do not suffer from a lack of regulation. Even today, Facebook removes posts containing incitement to violence, hatred, promoting drugs, pornography and so on. It also has its own set of rules in terms of advertisement. The biggest change will be a ban on so-called product placement, the exposure of a product of a certain brand. How exactly Brussels will complicate the lives of food and beauty bloggers will only be known by the end of the Trilog talks. But it's already clear that on-camera cooking of Barilla pasta in a pot by celebrity chef Jamie Oliver will no longer be possible. Thanks, EU. I mean, fucking thanks. That, why? Who does this help? That's the question I think that everyone should be asking. Who does this help? And I really think that what we're experiencing here is the problem of bureaucracy for bureaucracy's sake. Because bureaucrats gonna bureaucrat. That's their fucking jobs, is to create needless legislation. All they're going to do, all day. And Brussels is filled with these people. Tens of thousands of them. In various different councils who have got nothing better to do. In fact, they're being paid to do exactly this. So I'm not surprised that this is the kind of crap they come out with. And this is the sort of thing that the sort of tabloid rags in the UK have been really going at the EU for since the dawn of time. Because all they do is create needless regulation. I mean, I'm not against the concept of regulation. Regulation is necessary. Regulation without a purpose is not necessary and therefore can be scrapped. Another change to the directive is the proposal to supervise the moral development of children. That's what I want. The EU indoctrinating my kids. God, I'm so glad we're leaving. It sounds good, as long as you forget there is no such thing as a legal definition of a moral development. Well, duh. There's not even an objective definition of a moral development. Already today, social networks are required to block posts that are harmful to, to the physical or mental development of children. For example, the Blue Well Suicide Challenge, a, si a sinister online game that promotes self-harm. I imagine this is another one of those hoaxes, isn't it? Already to I, I don't know, I don't know shit about that. Already today, social media networks are required to block posts that are harmful to the physical and mental children. Blah blah. blah. <clears throat> well, according to the rapporteurs, the state will now supervise such moral development. Again. This is not what I want. But the thing is, the worst part about this is the Conservatives are hardly any better. They absolutely love having control of society. In, in many ways, they're really no different to the SJWs. They, it's just two competing sets of 
authoritarian rules that you have to choose between. I really would rather have it so that people are responsible for their own kids and their own actions and actually have to rise to the challenge, rather than just relying on the fucking government to do everything. I mean, just a quick aside, right? Think of almost every socialist policy that you can think of. Think Just anything, you know, oh, money for schools or elderly homes or anything like that. How is it that these things can't be done by citizen intervention? Why not create, I don't know, for the school, like a, a school fundraising thing? And then just have these people knock on doors. Say, hi there, we're collecting for the local school. A lot of the schools are deprived in this area and we were hoping that you'd be able to give us some money. Have an internet charity. You know, it can just be a viral thing that you go, you send around, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It, these things could all be done via citizen action. They don't need government interference. And so the people who actually wanted to take part in these things could do so. People who didn't or couldn't wouldn't. But fuck it. We may as well just get the government to do everything. And I, I don't want to sound like a libertarian or an ANCAP, but I'm not a huge fan of government action. I just accept that in some circumstances it is necessary. A lot of these I don't think it is. So the colourful map of the EU features a dozen countries where they are, they are night and day differences in views on morality. Oh yeah. Are single mothers morally correct? We have just had a discussion about that in Estonia. What about sexual education in school or homosexuality? Disputes about euthanasia, contraception, abortion, abortion criticism of power. <laughs> yes, that's right. Morality isn't set in stone. There is no objective morality. Bad luck Christians get wrecked. The list could be continued indefinitely. And given recent electoral tendencies, one can be sure that there are people wishing to use the regulation so that even adults will not see the post that their government is deemed immoral. Hey, you are way behind the Conservative Party. They're going to be doing it so that, I mean, literally, legal pornography that is going to be difficult to get as adults, according to them, apparently. Meanwhile, social networks are a mini-model of the common digital market, the very space without borders that helps us understand each other and makes us stronger. The new directive, however, is aimed at building walls. Who will take control of this? Monitoring bodies or national regulatory authorities? The rapporteurs do not take on board a proposed requirement to make these bodies independent, both legally and functionally. Of course they don't. Why would they? Estonia's position, as presented to the Council, coincides with the position of the rapporteurs. I hope this is a misunderstanding, because anything else means that we are ready to entrust control over mass media, social networks, and the moral development of our children to a group of MEPs and a board mem of members of public broadcasters, appointed with the blessing of the ruling coalitions. <laughs> That's what people want out of Europe, apparently. But this thing, it's not even what people want out of Europe. It's they don't fucking know what's happening there. It's opaque. They, they have no idea. It's a giant monolithic bureaucratic nightmare. And they wouldn't even know where to start. And honestly, I, I honestly wonder if the EU wasn't designed that way from the, to, for that point. To make it impenetrable to the plebeians on the outside. I have raised only three of at least ten absurd provisions contained in the Parliament's position, which amounts to a total of 70 pages. Documents of this size are read only by MEPs working directly with them. Brilliant. In our case, that means the two main and seven shadow rapporteurs. The n these nine form the, the line of their political groups, reporting on the file at their meetings. Unfortunately, neither the centre-right nor the centre-left have ever discussed the AVMS directive, mainly because they believe the files in the cults committee are non-controversial. Well, I guess that's an opinion, isn't it? I can't, I can't imagine handing over control of social networks and practically everything on the internet to the European, the European Council, or whichever one was doing it, is a is controversial in Europe, but I, I, I think it's pretty controversial here. And again, I hate to say it, but the Tories are going to do the exact damn same thing, and I'm not happy with that either. Fuck me. I tell you, after Brexit, the the fight won't end. We will, we will have to, we will have to start going at the Tories. On the plus side. British politicians are a lot more accessible than European politicians, as far as I can tell. British politicians have a tendency to react to what their constituents are doing. It can be good, it can be bad, but at least it shows they are paying attention. And I think that if we cause enough havoc, and when I say havoc, I mean petition, 
and basically spam enough people on social media, we could at least get their attention. At group meetings, everyone wants to talk about the budget or Brexit, not something called the review of the Audiovisual Media Services Directive. The rapporteurs took advantage of that. I told you, this is what they do. But the unfortunate reform can still be avoided. As old coordinator in the cultural Culture Committee and Shadow Rapporteur on the Directive, I will do my best to reopen the mandate. Our group, with the support of the radical left GUE, Euroscan, I don't know who these parties are, has requested the issue v- is voted on by the plenary. We will do our best to convince other MP- MEPs, but we have little time. The vote should take place on Thursday, which means it's already taken place. And half of the British MEPs who share our position will not be in Strasbourg, as the UK election campaign is in full swing, obviously. There is a serious chance that the European Parliament's official position on the audiovisual services will be to legalise state censorship in social networks. Well, Jana Toom, a Liberal MP from Estonia, MEP from Estonia, I feel, your fa- I feel your pain, dude. I absolutely feel your pain. Unfortunately, what are you going to do? The, the worst part about all of this is that the freedoms that we currently enjoy on social media, which are dwindling as it is, especially if you live in a country like Britain, and you almost aren't, they are, it, it's honestly just going to be bureaucracy of the EU that crushes them. They're just going to weigh them down. It's, it's just going to be too difficult to engage with the system, to get the system to change. This is something that I have said about before, and many others are not unique in this regard, and I'm, I don't think it's something that's going to change. Again, thank God we're leaving.